is up, y'all? I'm in Jammin' Outdoors, and this is my channel. Welcome back y'all. So today we're actually working on the 1974 F100. So previous video, we got it running, we rebuilt the carb, runs great, super excited. Next step is to actually get it drivable. Now it's in gear, don't really know why it is. Um, the shifter is not working. Now, one thing about this truck was it previously was a three on the tree. If you don't know what that is, um, you act, it was a manual shift but you shifted on the column, sort of like you know newer trucks, um, except it was actual manual. You had to do it every single gear, which there's only three, because there's three on the tree. Um, but I think something happened to the column, I think where the, you know, the lever uh, spins or something down on the inside of the engine bay. Something happened to that or whatever, and so they switched, they cut a hole in the floor and actually switched it to a three on the floor. Um, I don't know if they, I don't think they came that way, um, I don't know though, honestly, I wasn't alive in 74, so. But anyway, I gotta figure out what's wrong with it, why it's not shifting, um, so I'm gonna have to hop underneath, look at the linkages, and see what I need to do, see if I need to order any parts. And then also, I have the drive shaft for it, I just have to clean it up, and so I can throw it in there, and hopefully I'll be able to drive it around in this video. Let's get into it. So, the linkage is hooked up, but I don't think it's actually doing anything. So, one of these, some of these might have to be adjusted. Just gotta do a little bit of research, probably figure out what needs to do what. Plus, this mount doesn't look very secured, which probably could be part of the problem. There's no, like, brace on it. So, I was doing a little research, and you need to get the transmission in neutral, obviously. And then obviously adjust these to where the shifter can go back and forth between these two brackets, because that's neutral. There might be something wrong with that pin. The pin wants to be pushed out, I think. And this bracket definitely needs to be braced. This thing is just flopping around. So I might need to make something that goes from here across to the top of the tranny. And it doesn't help that that's slotted down there, I guess. Way back there. It's slotted. So it's just moving around. So I'm gonna loosen that up and kind of get that thing straight again. Try to get in a neutral. Try to get it adjusted right, and then I'm gonna put a brace up there. Okay, let's see what size these bolts are. Smaller than a 17. 16. Looks like this pin that goes on the shifter right there that goes between um, both those linkages. It goes in between like that. Looks like this side is worn out. Might need to replace that little pin if I can. Oh! So there is neutral. Spin the drive shaft and then That's a gear. That right there. Neutral, heck yeah. Okay. So, to my understanding, you gotta pull these cotter pins out, get these to line up perfectly straight. So like the shifter, you can move back to side to side and go in each one and be able to shift. I'm gonna go ahead and take these cotter pins out so I can adjust them or they're not cotter pins, they're just bent pieces of metal. Kinda, I guess you just wanna set it in the middle of that movement. Just going a little bit more. One of these brackets right here are super loose. I'm gonna see if I can tighten that up so there's less slop. So I got it, it goes back and forth. Now, this pin right here is the only issue now, so I'm either gonna have to pull it out, try to re-weld it, build it back up, and then sand it back down, 
or just buy a new pin. I don't know if you can easily buy that at the store or not, but I guess we'll see. I'm going to pull all that assembly off, pull that pin out, and then um, see if I can look up the part, see if it's local. If not, I'd probably just uh, get my TIG welder out and build that metal back up and then grind it back down. Oh, I'm going to die. I got that bolt out, so now I'm just going to pull the whole shifter out from the top. Oops. So this is what I'm working with. That's what's messed up. There had to be some type of clip that held it on the other side. Or maybe just pressed in, I don't know. Okay, so this pin, I couldn't find it anywhere. And so I actually sanded down this edge because I'm actually end up tacking this back in here. But first, I'm actually going to like build it back up. So as you can see, it's worn down on parts of it. Even this side's worn down a little bit. So I'm actually going to go around it and build it back up. Do a light grinding after the fact, but just try to build it back up so it actually engages properly and well. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit first. Beautiful. Now I'm going to clean it off with some lacquer thinner. So I chucked it up in the drill, and as you can see, the main shaft is straight. So I'm actually going to put the grinder inside the vise, and then I'm going to spin the drill and put it onto the grinder. So hopefully it makes a really even shaft. Here it is. Now let's do the other side. So I'm done with the piece. These things are a little bit skinnier than they originally were, but it still should work more than okay. So I'm gonna put it back in and then tack it back in. And then we should be able to install it and it should work fine. Heck yeah. That'll work. So I got it mocked up on the table. And as you can see here, if I get these things lined up. So it's currently resting in this position and it's got a little bit of lip. And then you move it over. Clearly engaged over here, and then you shift, and it retracts back into this one. It's good. It's ready to be installed again. So I have just the shifter rod, and it's not really comfortable to shift with. And I was looking, and I had a nut that is the right thread pattern. So... I think that I'm going to take one of my old pistons. I found this one out in my barn. Looks good. And I'm going to weld it to the wrist pin. And call it done. For right now at least. Because some of these shifter knobs are like $20, $30. So there's no point in spending the money on one if I can easily make one. So earlier when I was welding, I was using the Everlast to TIG weld. Now I'm going to use the Yes Welder MIG function because it's just a whole lot easier to do this. So I'm gonna clean these off real quick and then uh, I'm just gonna weld it on there. So I'm gonna make sure to switch it from plasma to MIG, select. Gotta move the ground clamp over to negative. It's on gas. 
Let's see. Eh, we'll go with three eighths. Well, I kind of fully committed to welding this nut on there, so I'll probably have to find another nut and weld it to this one. Oh well, that was my mistake. Probably shouldn't have welded inside where the threads were anyway, but it is what it is. Now let's see if I can go find another nut. My lucky day, I found another one. So I'm gonna weld on the exterior of this one and it shouldn't damage the threads at all. So here's the finished product. Obviously, they're not beautiful welds. I mean, obviously, there was enough fusion. They don't look bad, but, you know, I don't really care about the look so much. But that welder does do great. I am thankful for that thing. But I actually ended up having to find another nut that fits on here to be like a lock nut. So I ended up having to have three of the same thread patterns for this thing. But it's not a big deal. So I'm going to thread it on there. And just turn it where I want it, and then I'm going to lock it. Just take a crescent and uh, lock that back one. But, obviously I'm in gear, but, you know, it, it works. I know that's, that's uh, I think that's reverse. First, back to neutral, and then third and fourth, I believe. Something like that. Anyway, it works, it looks good. It's not the most comfortable thing, but it'll work temporarily until... I start driving the truck more often. So I went and got the drive shaft from the barn and the U-joint over here, it's a little rough right here, but these are good. I have the other cap over there on the countertop and this U-joint is more than okay actually. It's, it's pretty good. Um, and then I'll probably grease that after the fact. Unfortunately, none of these U-joints are greasable. These I have to put grease in the caps before I put them on, but these are actually pretty good. These are not the best, and they're kind of, you know, toast until I actually pull the keepers out and press them out. I put new U-joints in at that point, so um, it is what it is. It's going to work for right now. I mean, these aren't going to, like, blow up on me, so, you know, I'll run these for a little bit until I am actually getting this thing reliably on the road. Um, that's probably have to get wheels and tires on, brake split, all that kind of stuff. So, but let's throw this in real quick. So I got both the caps right here. Unfortunately, that one doesn't have a seal, but again, it's temporary. I got as much rust off as I can without actually brushing it or anything, but I'm going to pop the cap on. So I got this one on. Doesn't have a seal, so it's kind of exposed, but you know, it is what it is. Let's see, this goes on here. Nice. This one rolls pretty nicely too even without the seal. Now let's see if we can clean the diff off and actually find the U-bolts and the nuts because honestly I don't even know where those are because there's nothing there. So first thing I'm going to do though is make sure this splines are good. Now we're going to put some grease on it. We're gonna try to get some of the crap that's inside of here out. Now I'm gonna take a file and just try to clean up those edges a little bit, maybe.
Now I'm gonna go wash it out. So I found the U-joint straps inside the hardware bin. Um, I cleaned up the threads and made sure they threaded on good. So I cleaned off inside of this one. So we'll see if it slides on. Finally, yeah, it's sliding on. Ooh. Put these in. Lock washer nut. All right, drive shaft is hooked up. If I wanted to take it for a test ride right now, I could, but it's nighttime. So now that I got everything hooked up, I am going to pull the truck out into where my F-250 normally sits so I can gain the space back for my bikes. They've all been crammed over here and it's been real tight recently and my girl really probably doesn't love the truck being right here. So we're gonna pull it out there and let's see how it goes. I am super happy with the progress on the F100 project today. I was actually able to get it running and driving, and I'm super excited, huge accomplishment, but next step is getting it on the road. So there's a few things I need to do before then. Wheels and tires, check the brakes, and then also steering wheel. There is no steering wheel. So I have to get a, an adapter for the steering wheel, the Ford column two, because I wanna to go to a Chinese steering wheel, I have to get an adapter. Um, which I just purchased that yesterday. So it should be here within the next week. Um, I actually purchased a set of wheels and tires already, so I need to get adapters because this is a 5x5.5 5 5 .5, and I'm going to a 6x5.5. So for that, I'm going to have to get adapters. For brakes, I don't know if I'm going to have to replace anything. It does stop. I might just be able to do a fluid flush, but it might make sense just in the name of safety to replace stuff but I guess we'll see when we tear into it. When I pull the wheels off to switch um, to the new wheels, I'm gonna just check everything, verify everything, probably do a fluid flush, um, and then we'll go from there. But until next time, catch you on the flip side.